Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to today's stream. Um, today um, we're excited to be bringing you something um, quite interesting, which is on CI/CD with GitHub Action. So, um, Melody, what's up? Hi, Oliver. How's it been? It's it's been a rough week for me. So. <laughs> yeah, the same thing here. All right, you know, it's always you know, especially when. Yeah, especially is it like the weather and everything could sometimes come in issue and you know, like the work work as well. So it's been rough as well. <laughs> okay, so uh, did you get me melody? I I'm sorry about that. I lost you for a moment. Okay. okay, okay, okay. I mean, I mean it's it's been a bit rough, but you know, we're catching up. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, sure, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let's just um, get right into what we have for today, which is um, CI CD with uh, GitHub Actions. Before we go over to that, um, we usually do something. We like to talk about what we learned during the week, and those are our markers. So, uh, Melody, could you just you know enlighten us on something you you just uh, learned during the week? Uh, I didn't really look as much this week. I started, uh, you know, I've never been strongly DevOps focused. So okay. uh, more recently, I started looking at uh, uh, DevOps, like, you know, becoming more DevOps focused. So I've always been, you know, uh, a full stack engineer, you know, with code parts of things. But recently, I started looking at uh, more of DevOps and stuff like that and writing scripts. And yeah, so far, so good. It's been uh, good. And it's more of a generic thing because... I'm like touching all sides of our deployments, uh, things like, uh, you know, general deployments and best ways to automate your uh, DevOps uh, infrastructures and stuff like that. Mm, okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Um, I think for me, I decided to just go into like try something new. So I tried something. Uh, I've been using doing um, infrastructure automation with um, CloudFormation on AWS, but recently I decided to try something new. Um, I decided to try um, Terraform. So Terraform using um, HCL um, um, syntax, um, creating infrastructure, um, trying to create maybe some resources on AWS, and it was quite cool um, because if you if you know if you've been doing ter um, cloud formation, you must have been using something like YAML, uh, and you need to be careful with indentation. Depending on your choice, you might be using YAML or JSON, and you need to be very, very really careful with indentation, else you just you know. Um, break things so but with um, HCL um, HashiCorp um, configuration language it was quite um, a bit um, the syntax was a bit easy to understand um, and also I, I you don't have to like you know pay huge attention to indentation doesn't matter since it's just um, it doesn't follow those YAML and JSON things where you need to be more careful with indentation yeah or YAML things rather so I also started looking at okay so if I use HashiCorp, um, uh, HashiCorp Terraform, do I really need to um, use something like Ansible and um, um, Chef, um, Ansible, Chef, and Puppet? So I got to understand that you know these tools actually have where they shine, right? Something like Terraform, something like um, Pulumi, and something like CloudFormation. Those things are infrastructure automation tools. They help you create infrastructure that is the underlying infrastructure where your application runs, that is your load balancers, your EC2 instances, and all that. Why something like Puppet, Chef, and um, Ansible, those are configuration managers. They help you configure those applications on how they will run on those um, EC2 instances or, or, how, or how your software will run on those that infrastructure you created with something like Terraform or um, something like um, CloudFormation. So the thing is, you can also achieve these things. You can also achieve configuration with um, um, Terraform, but you know, most times you want to leave the tool that does the job better to do the job. Yeah, so that's um, actually like a rundown or a summary of what um, I've been doing um, through the week uh, for me. Yeah, so uh, with that said, let's jump into the um, show proper um, melody. We will do, we, melody will be talking ab about CI CD from the slides, and then we're going to actually building something or creating. CI CD pipeline with GitHub Action, which is our focus for today. All right, uh, Melody, over to you. All right. So uh, today's talk is on CI CD, which is a very awesome one. 
And one of the reasons you want to consider CICD is because uh, technology is advancing and when you're, even for a very small team, right, you don't want to manage things yourself. Uh, we are humans. And one of the, uh, one of the benefits of a code or, a, you know, a written code actually is that your code would always run when, uh, you know, your environment is well set up and uh, favorable and, you know, circumstances are remain, remaining the same. Your code will always run and execute the set of commands you've written, right? So yeah. CICD is more of a way of automating, you know, your, your code process. So when you go live, when you go live, right, uh, you want to automate your deployment process you don't want to you know you don't want to handle things like okay let's say you have a set of uh, tests over for instance uh, i've written this set of code and i want to make sure that there are no unused variables in the code right which is very uh necessary for my organization right now i don't have to always go ahead and start checking whether there is an unused variable or not, or I've written a set of code that's going to check that there are no unused variable. Now, when someone raises a PR, uh, I don't want to always go ahead and push a button and be like, okay, check for unused variable or run a command or something like that. I want that to run automatically because then if you're working in a very distributed team where someone may be working uh, by 3 a.m. and some other person will be working by 2 p.m., now, you may not be available by 2 p.m. to review a code or 3 a.m. to review a code. So CICD stands for continuous integration and continuous deploy, uh, development or deployment. It's, it's a set of practice and process used by software uh, development teams to deliver code changes more efficiently and reliably. So CICD aims to automate the build, testing, and deployment of software applications. And that's what it does, right? So you have your software, it, you automate it, right? Uh, you, your, your, your delivery process, so your deployment, your production process, when you automate those processes from uh, merging of code, from uh, running, restarting your server, for instance, if you have a React server, every time you merge your code, you don't want, you don't want to go into a CD into a data ocean server or something and start running Yarn start or run, yeah, restarting server or something like that. That is going to give you a downtime. That is going to be very, very uh, not okay. It, I mean, it's going to be very, uh, you know, not the right way to do it, right? So CICD helps you achieve that. Now, what are the benefits of CICD? So what are we even going to benefit from CICD? Uh, fast uh, time to market. So for instance, if you push a code, you click a button from GitHub, merge this code, it merges. CICD handles every other thing. So it handles whether validating your code that your code is correct. So uh, for instance, if I push a wrong code in React, if I write a code that is not correct, or probably I have a, an, uh, a bracket, a non-matching bracket, and I push a code, as long as I have a set of rule that says, okay, in my GitHub actions or some, some, some other place, check for uh, you know this, try to uh, test this. Um, I think we're losing Melody um, Network. Uh, Melody, can you hear me? Uh, Melody, can you hear me? Mm, okay. Melody, can you hear me? Um, okay, uh, just going to go over to the slides and Melody, are you there? Um, okay, uh, let me just Uh, Melody, are you there?
internet. Yeah, Melody, we lost you um, for some seconds. Hello, Melody. Um, hello, Melody, are you there? Okay, so uh, I think I might have to come in here. Mm. Melody, can you hear me? Okay, um, I think we lost Melody, so um, I'll just have to cover up. Uh, okay. Okay, so um, I was just um, take it from. Okay, I think we, we have Melody back. Uh, Melody, can you hear me? Okay, um, I will take it from. Um, okay, I think um, the network is a bit um, due to the weather. The network is bad, so um, I will just continue from where Melody stopped. So, um, okay, so first of all, we're looking at the benefits of CI CD. How, why should I encourage my organization to use CI CD? All right, so let's say you are, you're in a team where nobody's, um, where you're not using CI CD, you have to manually do everything, you have to go and you have to um, pull the code inside the server, you have to run the code whenever there are updates and all of that. Okay, so one of which we, Melody explained was um, faster, faster time to market. So, because um, those things you're doing manually um, takes time, right? So with CI/CD, CI/CD reduces manual process and speed speeds up um, the release cycle. Also, early bug detection because you have scripts in place um, that checks for code um, once there maybe a PR is being raised, uh, you can detect those bugs even without reviewing the code because you have something like tests, you need tests, all that. So those can be put inside your CI/CD making the process more streamlined and you know you could easily detect bugs and also fix issues all right so also it increases um, collaboration so with ci cd you can have as i said um, um code integration um can be coupled with something like um, um code um reviews like aws has something called aws code guru so you can have that inside your ci cd pipeline where um when um there is a push uh, you push a code. I don't need to call a team member to review that code. I can actually check for um, maybe um, bugs or any kind of uh, maybe um, potential um, issues that could um, come up from that code. So I can integrate that into my CI CD workflow. All right. So also, um, let's say um, I do something like you can have a CI CD pipeline where you could integrate messaging, like when someone raises, it, raises a PR. Right, you want to notify your admin or who is in charge to like review a PRO. So with CI CD, you can send automated messages and all that. Okay, so this um, helps to encourage um, team collaboration. Okay, so um, continuous feed feedback loop. So that's also one of the benefits of CI CD, right? So it helps um, rapid feedback helps improve the quality of software. So because of you have CI CD in place, um, softwares are delivered really quick. So you already be within a short, um, shorter amount of time, you're getting feedback for what you're building. You're able to detect, oh, am I building this um, rightly or wrong? You could you know, add new features and also uh, fix issues for an existing feature. So CI CD is something that um, at the end of the day promotes your business, makes things uh, more, um, more um, makes things streamlined, like you, you, you don't have to do things manually because manual stuff um, leads to error. 
Okay, so next. Um, so next, uh, the first part of CI/CD is continuous integration. Continuous integration has to do with code changes, right? So how you integrate code, because at the end of the day, is code your what the value of your business is code or whatever company you're in is the code they have in place. All right. So the first part of CI/CD is code um, continuous integration, which involves maybe your um, developers, developing team or development team com coming together. Um, they're all like, you know, everybody's contributing code, raising the PR, or building new features, fixing bugs, creating chores and all that. All right, so CI is the practice of merging code changes frequently into a shared repository, right? Using something like Git. Git is a distributed um, version control system, right? So, and the code is automa automatically built and tested to ensure that um, it integrates successfully with the existing code base. That is um, things like, okay, you're including you're including a new feature to your branch, right? To an existing repository, maybe your main repository, right? So with CI/CD automation, you could see that, you know, those um, features are properly merged into the existing code without introducing, with, without introducing much bugs because those new code has been already, uh, those codes has been checked, um, they've been analyzed for box fixes and whatever it might be, all right? So the next thing is also, it helps identify issues, all right? With proper integration or continuous integration, it helps identify fixes early and allows for quicker bug fixes, all right? So I said with that CICD, inside your CICD, you can have those um, automation in place, check code before, you know, any code is being merged. Also send things like test results and all that back to who is raising the PR. So I don't need to manually go and um, start running tests. Automatically, when I push my code, um, whatever tests I have in place in my repository, maybe integration test, um, unit test, those tests automatically runs and I get my test results, right? So I don't need someone to um, look at my code or test my code. Okay, so next we have the next part, continuous delivery. Continuous delivery is actually the marketing part, what you're, what you're actually marketing, right? So after you have a code, right, what happens next? You want it to get to the user. You want the user to use that feature. That is the product, right? Maybe you have a, a, a software, maybe an application where people get to um, shop online. They need, they need to buy things. So how does how do you get those that application to the end user? That's where con continuous integration or continuous sorry continuous delivery comes in, right? So CD, which is continuous delivery, and in some cases they call it continuous deployment. The only difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment is continuous delivery requires um, manual check, so you need to come and say okay because um, your system could be critical. You don't want to automatically push. To production you just want to have someone who does the final presses the final button for um deployment so that's the only difference between continuous delivery and um, continuous deployment with continuous deployment everything gets um, deployed automatically all right so cd is a practice of automatically deploying code changes to production or staging environment it also um streamlines the process of releasing software to end user as i as i mentioned before also, CD ensures that the software is always in a deployable state, all right? It also helps to identify issues early and allows for bug fixes. Yeah, so depending on how robust your workflow is, you could run even load testing inside a CD. Like before that software gets to that CD part, you could decide to run, do load tests, any kind of test, just to ensure that, look, this thing we're releasing is actually in the right um, state and there are no new bugs. Okay, so... Next, um, let's now go into the focus, um, one of the, the focus for today, which is actually trying to do CI CD with GitHub Action. Okay, I think uh, Melody is back. Melody, want to take it from here? Yeah, sorry about. Okay, I think the network. Uh, so. Okay. Okay, you can go on. Okay, so uh, I think uh, Kalechi uh, it's has or, uh, has gone uh, you know the extent of explaining CI and CD. So uh, CI would be your continuous integration. So the general you know 
running, automating your tests and all those things. And CD is like your deployment. So, uh, you know, when probably you still want someone to merge your code, right? When you merge your code, you want it to deploy automatically. So you don't want to like CD into a data ocean server or CD into somewhere and start you know, spinning up your code, you know, making sure that your code is still connect or something is still connected to, let me say you have, you're using a, uh, the cases where you're using probably a server like a Redis server and stuff like that, you don't want to start, you know, trying to respawn connections or, or like you know, respawn a, a Redis server and stuff like that. So that's what your CD does for you. So it generally handles. CI workflow uh, would be your CI CD workflow. Would be, you can see, like, you know, you run a job, it's going to tell you uh, this as. Uh, job setup and run, action checkout, use node, and all those things. Uh, this is an example of what you're going to see when you're running these jobs, right? You know, uh, probably from your uh, GitHub actions or whichever you choose to use. This is an example of what you're going to see. And this is your basic YAML file, your command, your configuration, or this is the statement you're going to write. You know, YAMLs are basically uh, and like YAMLs are like JSON, uh, but YAMLs are like uh, mostly used for things like this. And you state your pipeline, your name, your pipeline, and you want to state your actions, right? Things like, okay, what happens? What branch you want to uh, you, you want to be uh, looking at, right? Uh, the jobs you want to run. So you want to test the front end, you know, what are the, what are the uh, uh, steps to this, uh, testing this front end and stuff like that. Uh, building front end, what do you want to do? What are the steps to building that front end and stuff like that? Those are how you specify it. So it's just basically a simple. You can see this, you could look at this as a, you know, your pseudo algorithm, right? But in, in this case here, your your uh, GitHub Actions actually uses your YAML file. If you've written YAML configurations before, you know that uh, it reads it, it's, uh, it has a format. When you specify those, uh, those uh, sequence in those formats, depending on whatever uh, CICD uh, uh, tool you want to use, it follows that step and goes ahead to uh, you know, deploy your states or goes ahead to run your flow. And this would be your uh, full pipeline. So this is an example of what we have here. So when you run git push, right, pushes your code, or uh, pushes your code. Now that uh, that code uh, is going to probably on GitHub, GitHub is going to uh, quickly test that, right? Test that code and make sure that, okay, everything is up, right? Then by testing that code, it means, uh, you know, probably is going to, uh, you know, compile that code or do whatever it wants, it wants to do, right? Or test that code. Once it tests that code, it will it, tell you that when everything is all good, you can go ahead and deploy this if you want. And when you deploy your instance, it goes ahead to compile your code if it's a Docker uh, file, it's going to go ahead and run a Docker build and stuff like that. And if you're using tests, whichever test, integration testing or your unit test or, you know, whichever test you want to use, your E2E or whatever, it's going to go ahead and run. And make sure that everything is still in sync. And when it does that, then you can have your deployment. So you can have your staging deployments and you could do your QA, right? Your quality uh, assurance testing. When you've done your quality assurance testing, then you could uh, you could have a flow that once everything has gone through uh, correctly and there's a quality assurance test that has been passed, uh, depending on how you want to automate your QA, if you automate your QA process, you could run Puppeteer or something like that. You could have someone go manually push a button, then it could deploy from staging to production. Right. And that's what you have. That's how you want to have your production set up out. You know, in a in a in a, in a, uh, in a real life organization, you want to have that kind of setup whereby if you've done all your testing or your staging and stuff like that, you've validated, you can go ahead and deploy to you know production. So uh, we've been talking a lot. Uh, mostly, Kalechi has been talking a lot, and I would really commend you for that. So let's get started and see these theories we've been saying. How can we really get it done? How can we actually deploy a code and have it monitored and have our CICD thingy, you know, running for us uh, the right way? So uh, over to you, Kalechi. Uh, 
Okay. Um, okay. Um, just a second. Let me try try and arrange my screen a bit. All right. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in. Okay. So, um, can you see my screen? I think so. Yeah. Showing well. All right. Um, so we're going into the first, uh, the next phase, which is um, an important phase, which is trying to you know do these things ourselves. All right, all right. We've been talking about CICD. Let's see how CICD is actually done. All right. So uh, what we're going to be doing will be um, deploying an application. Um, we have a repository with um, a front-end application. We'll be deploying that application to CloudFront. All right. So we'll be connecting um, GitHub to um, AWS um, services, uh, which is a CloudFront is a, a service on AWS that helps you deploy front-end um, static assets. All right. It's like a CD state CDN. Okay, so first of all, we'll create um, some resources on AWS that will enable us to um, um, connect to AWS and, um, you know, deploy, um, connect to AWS and, you know, control CloudFront to create, you know, um, to deploy our application. Okay, so, so this is just like, you know, showing a demo of how we can use um, GitHub Actions to as achieve um, CI CD. This could be depending on your, uh, what you're working on. This could be um, whatever um, service you want to talk to. I think the process is still the same. The main focus here is showing you how you can define these steps inside your YAML file. Okay, so since we're deploying to AWS, I'll go over to my AWS. I had already logged in. Um, I'll go back to my AWS account and I will create um, the resources, resources we'll be using. Okay. So the first resources will be resource we'll be using is an S3 bucket because uh, the S3 bucket will serve as a static, it will serve as a storage for our static assets. You know, for front-end applications, the static assets you have your index, um, that HTML file as well as some JavaScript files or whatever image you have, All right? So um, the S3 bucket will hold that, and then that S3 bucket will be connected to CloudFront distribution um, that will then um, show this. So we've actually done this um, in our previous stream. So just in case you want to see um, how to create these things, but I'll quickly go inside S3 here on AWS and create a new bucket. So I'm inside S3. I'm just going to click on create bucket here at the far right. And I'm going to name my bucket shop because what we'll be deploying is a shopping um, application. Uh, like an e-commerce application. Okay, so I'll name it shop and I'll just add some random strings because buckets needs to be globally unique. So add some random strings, which is like a number, right? So um, with that, I can just, yeah, with that, I can just come all the way down and click on create bucket. It's that simple. Okay, so we have our, uh, we have our new bucket here, which is this one. This one is another one. This one here is our new bucket. Okay, now we need to head up, go back to Cloud uh, Front. So inside Cloud Front, we'll just create a new distribution, which is what would serve our application, right? So I'll just click on Create Distribution I'll, and I'll choose a domain. The domain I'll be choosing here will be like um, S3. So I'm just waiting for it to load. Load. So over here, I'll come here. You see, this is the bucket we created, the shop um, 1694. Okay, and I'll come to origin path and I'll just um, do um, forward slash, which is the base part. Oh, I don't need to even enter anything, right? So I don't need to enter anything, it's optional. Okay, so um, origin access, um, I'll just um, use origin access control settings. That is because my bucket is not public, right? I will only select public if my bucket is public. And then for this, I need to, you know, create a new access control, um, origin access control. I could either click on create control settings or I could just use an existing one. So since I have an existing one, I will just um, use that. Okay, so once we do that, I think um, that's all. So we just need to redirect HTTP to HTTPS and um, it's it. Um, that's it. We're using going with the default um, cache policy. 
And um, yeah, so that's it. We're not doing anything uh, very particular here. It's just adding, setting some defaults and and working with that since we just, um, this is just a demo, right? So I'll click on create distribution. Okay, I'm missing this. Um, I don't need a security. I don't need um, web address, firewall. This is a demo. I can just click on create distribution. Okay, so this will go ahead and create um, a new distribution. And I need to update the buckets with the policy. A policy is something that allows the policy allows um, CloudFront talk to um, the S3 buckets. That is fetch static asset to be storing on S3. All right. So I'll come over to the bucket, uh, which is the shop uh, 1694. And I'll go over to the permissions tab. Let me zoom in here a bit. Um, permissions tab. And I'll edit uh, the policy here and I'll just paste the policy I copied from here. So from cloud formation here, we copy the policy by clicking on copy policy button. Okay, so I would then come back to my S3 here. You see the policy here, it's you know giving get object access to the cloud front distribution we just created. Okay, so I'll scroll all the way down and click on save. Okay, so this would save the policy and then allow um, CloudFront pull whatever object we store here. Those objects, as I said before, are the index.html or the index.css file, whatever file our front-end application we're about to deploy uses. Okay, so after doing this now, we need to also do one thing to allow GitHub, which is where we're hosting the code, right? So since we're using GitHub action, obviously our code is hosted on GitHub. Okay, so um, I will just do one more thing, which is create um, some access keys to allow GitHub um, talk to AWS, right? To allow GitHub action rather talk to AWS, telling AWS, look, um, this is this application. We want, I want to deploy this application, and I want to maybe create an invalidation on CloudFront. Invalidation is just like clearing CloudFront's catch. Okay, so um, let's for us to do that, we need to use IAM. Right, so we need to create the user on IAM. IAM stands for Identity and Access Management. That's how you manage identity and access on AWS. Right, so we need to create a new user. So we just create a new user called um, GitHub Action. Since this user is just going to be, um, you know, it's just going to be a user that's, it's just going to act like a user. GitHub Action is going to act like a user doing something on AWS. Right, so we'll go next and we just want to attach policies directly and we'll be attaching S3 full access. Um, and then uh, this could be also fine grain. You could attach full access to just a specific bucket. But for the purpose of this demo, I will just um, give um, Amazon S3 full access. And then we'll give another permission, um, which is the um, CloudFront full access so that the user we're creating GitHub would have access to talk to CloudFront, right? So CloudFront full access, right? So we've just selected two permissions so far. Uh, we'll click next. You see, we have two permissions. We're giving uh, Amazon uh, S3 full access and we're giving, giving CloudFront um, full access. Since these are the services, um, the user we're creating GitHub action uh, will be doing. These are the services GitHub Action will be communicating with. Okay, so I'll click on create user. And after cl clicking on create user, the next thing I want to do is get the um, access keys, right? So the access keys act like, you know, some form of authentication. Um, what, what you can provide, GitHub Action needs to provide or GitHub Action needs to provide to get access to our S3 environment. Okay, so to do that, I'll select the user here as I did GitHub Action, the user we just created. And I'll click on security credentials. Okay, so clicking on security credentials, I'll scroll over to where you have access keys and I'll click on create access key. Okay, I'll select others because GitHub Action doesn't fall into any of this category. And then I'll give it a tag value, a description. Okay, so I'll click read. So now,
So now on doing this, we were provided with two uh, really important things, the access key and the secret access key. Whenever you want an application sitting outside um, AWS to talk to AWS, you provide these two keys, the access key and the secret access key. So I'm just going to copy these two keys. Um, and I'm going to put it inside a notepad. We'll be using that key in, in a short while, shortly. So, and then I'll click here, I'll just copy it. I'm not going to show it because this key is secret, it's meant to be secret. So I just copied it and I can click close. Now I'm done with, um, okay, so I've already uh, seen the keys already. Um, let me just verify that. Yeah, I have the keys so I can continue. Okay, so I've just created a new key here. You can see that key here. Um, yeah, so next we need to start writing our GitHub um, uh, action scripts to be able to do the necessary thing, which is um, build our application and then push it to S3 and then invalidate um, CloudFront. Okay, so uh, let's go over to the uh, application. This is the application. It's like an e-commerce application where people buy things online. So it's just a basic application we had during a previous um, stream. Okay, so on the application here, um, I already have it opened locally. Let me just get it. Okay, so um, I'm just going to zoom in a bit and clear this. I'm just going to open this wide. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Yeah, so this is the application um, we have. The same thing we have on GitHub here is the same thing we have here. Okay, so next, the first thing we need to do, since we're going to be um, doing this with GitHub Action, the first thing you want to do is create a folder inside here, inside your application roots. That folder must be called, um, must go with the name .github, right? So that's a .github. So that's the name. And inside this um, folder, you want to have a folder called uh, workflows. Okay, so inside this .github folder, you want to have a folder um, workflows. And then inside workflow, that's where you want to define whatever workflow you want, all right? So we'll just create a folder here and put in um, the workflow we want, which is we want a CI/CD pipeline. So I'll name it um, pipeline. And that um, workflow must be written in YAML file. Uh, yeah, so that's YML. Okay, so yeah, so well, we're, we're done with the folder creation and the file creation, which is creating a .github folder and creating a folder inside that .github folder work, named workflow, and then creating a new pipeline file. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to start to write, define some YAML files here, right? That, to instruct GitHub Action on what to do. So I'm just going to be um, pasting some things just to uh, make it uh, faster. So the first thing we want to have is a name for our workflow. As I said here, the name is just up to you, whatever name you want for the workflow. Here I'm using pipeline. And then next we define where we want this workflow or when we want this workflow to um, trigger. Um, I just want to zoom in a bit. Um, yep. So I'm just going to paste in that chunk of code. So we're saying this workflow should trigger whenever, which is the on tag, whenever there is a push to a particular branch. So we're going to change this whenever there is a push to the main branch, okay? So we're selecting, oh, if there is a push to the main branch, then whatever we define in the rest of this file, um, run them or run it. Okay, so next um, we have the job section, right? The jobs are like uh, a unit of work, like the unit of work you want um, to have in your workflow. Right, so you could think of it like in my workflow, I want to have a job that does testing, I want to have a job that does build, and I want to have a job that does deploy. I could also want say I want to have a different job that does different kinds of tests. Depending on your use case, it's up to you, depending on your workflow, depending on how your organization is set up. 
right? In some organization, in their jobs, they specify that, oh, they want to send a Slack message whenever there is a push to a particular branch, okay? So in today's demo, we're just going to be having jobs, and those jobs are the one that builds the application, the one that, um, that tests the application, and the one that deploys the application. Okay, so um, let's just um, do that now. Let's get uh, a piece of code that, a piece of code for that. So I'm just going to paste in here. Um, we're writing YAML, so we need to um, pay good attention to um, indentation. So this is the first job. The first job, what it does is it, it does testing, right? Test the application and ensure that, okay, the application is actually still good, right? There are no uh, issues. The application is still running, in fact. Okay, so um, so you can see here that we're specifying the job name. This is up to you, you the kind of the name of the job, right? So this is up to you. It could be anything. In this case, we're just saying test front end. And then we're specifying where the job should run. It should run on an Ubuntu machine. Um, definitely, it's a virtual, virtual machine um, environment on GitHub Action, right? So we're also saying that each the Ubuntu machine should have a Node.js Node um, installed on it, should have Node.js installed on it, specifically version 18.x, meaning anything from version 18 of Node.js. Okay, so now we've um, defined um, the, the underlying uh, virtual machine our job should run on. Next, we need to add steps. How do, do we run this job? How do we run the test? All right, the first thing we're using here is we're using or we're extending or we're importing a different action, which um, does code checkout. All right, so this checkout here is just us using uh, another action that helps you check out your code inside the same, this environment. Just think of it like a virtual environment or an Ubuntu machine, all right? Ubuntu is a variant for a Linux-based um, OS. All right, so a particular kind of distribution. All right, so next we're um, we're also setting up um, node. Um, right, we're also setting up node based on this particular version. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so this does this just everything here just you know sets up node. This one um, checks out your job, checks out your checks out your repository, and then. The main thing here is from this part where we get to install um, the dependencies. So if you're working with um, JavaScript, you know that first you want to do npm install to like install all the dependencies because usually you don't have node modules in your um, repository. So we want to install all the dependencies. Next, we want to um, lint the code. That is ensure the code is properly linted, maybe using ESLint. As you can see any the projects, there is a configuration file for ESLint. Okay, next we want to run tests with using the npm run test command. And this command are all found inside the uh, package.json file. So if you go inside the package.json file, you see that we have the lint um, command and we have the um, test command and we have the, um, we have the lint and the test command, which is the commands we're using here. Okay, so um, that's it for um, testing the front end. We also want to add another job. After testing, we want to be able to um, build. So we want to build the front end. So building the front end automatically, what we do, it will do is it will generate a dist folder, which is acting as um, build, like a build, build as, um, asset. Okay, so over here, we want to just go all the way down to, and ensure we are still following the indentation. And we want to paste in a uh, piece of code that does that. Okay, so here you see we're having another job after the test front end, we're having another job which is build front end, right? So this build front end still follows the same pattern. It runs on Ubuntu machine. Now there is a new um, um, key here, which is needs. This is saying that before this job runs, before this um, build front end runs, the um, test front end must run. So it's saying needs test front end. So test front end must complete and pass successfully before build happens. Okay, so inside again, we're specifying steps and we're also checking out the code. We're ensuring we're using, um, setting up node properly. And then we're installing dependencies again. And then next we're building the project, 
All right. So building the project just um, changes the uh, uh, changes the permission of a file, like you know, to allow us to run um, this as a bash script. And then finally on the online forty one, we're running it as a bash script. All right. We're running this bash script, which is the deployment slash build script. So I'll explain this part in a bit. Right. By the time we have the bash script um, folder. So um, next, we have um, a new key here, which is the EMV. The EMV here is just us passing some um, EMV our app relies on, right? So here we have app backend API, and we're just passing in a string. Right? This is just an example to show you how you could just uh, inject EMVs inside the application. And then next, we have a step here that just moves the build asset, which is the disk folder. All right, um, it moves it. In, sorry, this step moves the um, script, the deployment script inside the disk folder because we want to move it inside the disk folder because we want to share this folder for the next job we're going to have. Right, so we want to use this deployment um, folder. I'm going to paste in the folder shortly inside. And then the next, finally, we share this build um, artifact. And the artifact is everything inside the disk folder. Right, so this is a way we could. Doing this, doing this like this, we could then in a, a next job or in another job, we could read from this folder, right? We don't have to start. Um, um, we don't have to start checking out the repository or doing anything. We could just um, read from here. Okay. So next, um, we want to do the final um, job. We want to add the final job, which is deploy front end. What this does is just um, deploys the front end. Um, to cloud um, pushes it um, to S3 and then deploys it on CloudFront or invalidates CloudFront. Okay, so I'll just um, maintain um, indentation and I'll paste this. I'll make sure it matches up to the rest of the um, files. I'm going to shift this a bit. And yeah, so we have the build front end, which is what we just explained. And we have the deploy front end. Okay, and we're still doing almost the same thing here. We're running on Ubuntu and we're also adding the key here and it's build front end. Of course, before we deploy the front end, we want to make sure we've built it. All right, so that's why I say it needs build front end. So before this job runs, because job could run sequentially or parallel. So you could have two jobs running at the same time. You could have a job that waits for the, uh, a previous job to complete before um, the next one. Right. So before this build um, deploy front end would happen, the build front end must have completed. That's why you have, um, that's why you need to have this um, needs key here and specifying the job that this um, deploy front end or this deploy front end job relies on. Okay. So we have a couple of steps. Now we want to um, get those artifacts we shared up here. Right. So that's what this, um, this step does. So this step just um, downloads the artifact. So as you can see, action slash download artifact is us making use of uh, a different action or GitHub action that um, knows how to manage downloading of artifact, right? Artifact, this artifact we uploaded here, All right? So here we have um, the um, download artifact and we're specifying what kind of, what artifact we're trying to download. Which, and in this case is the build artifact, which is what we named it all the way here when we built uh, or when we uploaded the artifact. And then next, we have a job that configures AWS credentials. That is, it configures AWS because we're using AWS CLI. That's how we talk to AWS, right? Using the secret key and the um, secret key ID, we're able to pass this to the CLI. And then the CLI is able to communicate with AWS, right? So that's what we're doing here. The configure AWS just installs the CLI and then um, allows you to run AWS related command, right? So as you can see here, we're passing in the um, secret key and secret access key, secret key ID and secret access key, as well as the AWS region, All right? So that's what um, this step does. It just configures AWS so that you can run AWS command, All right? So the next job push, pushes um, our static access to, to S3 and then invalidates the catch, which is um, CloudFront. So why does it need to invalidate the catch? Because what happens is CloudFront pulls um, the static asset, whatever thing you have stored in it, uh, S3, 
inside a cache because it's a CDN. So CDN are um, um, content delivery network around or closest to the user. So because these things are in a CDN, you need to invalidate it so that, okay, tell platform that, look, these things you have inside your cache are old. Go again to um, S3 and pull the new thing we've just uploaded to S3, right? So that's what this command here is doing, right? So this command is just going to run um, some related commands to um, push to S3 as well as uh, invalidates the CloudFront cache. And also we're passing in an EMV, which is want to know which buckets to push the um, the built artifacts to, and also want to know which CloudFront distribution to push it to. Okay, so I think that's it for all the scripts or all the thing we need to do add to the YAML file. We can save this file. And then next we need to add the deployment folder. So if you look here, we have a part in the, um, we have um, a step that um, runs a build.sh, which is a shell script uh, inside a deployment folder. So we'll come at the project route here and we'll just add a new folder and we'll call it deployment. And inside deployment, we'll have um, the script. So we'll have um, a build dot sh, and we'll have um, another one a a deploy dot sh. So as the name implies, the build dot sh contains shell commands to um, build the project, and the deploy dot sh contains shell command to deploy the project. So inside the build here, we just go over. And I'm just going to paste in this script. So I'm just going to paste in the script. So this is a script. What this does is it just runs npm run build, right? So that's the majorly what it's doing is exporting the variable passed in and then run npm run build, which is a command on the right here that builds the project. Right? So if you look here, um, npm run build just builds the project. So this project is a solid JS project. Okay, so inside pipeline, let me just make a reference to where we used it. So here you can see that we ran the script. This first command, this first um, command just um, changes the permission of the script to allow us to run it as a bash script. Then the next one here is us running that bash script. So this is how we execute the bash script. And inside EMB, we're passing in the app, um, app backend API which is what we're using inside the build.sh script, right? So um, this might be a mistake here, right? Okay, it's not a mistake. So we have solid app backend API. It's making use of the variable um, app backend API, which is what we passed in here. Okay, so next we have the next script, which is the deploy script. That's the script that deploys, um, that does the deployment, um, carries out the deployment process. So um, first, the first line here is just us um, saying that this this must be this is called shebang. Um, if you've done scripting, so saying that this must be run inside a bash shell. Okay, so um, so what this command does is uses the AWS CLI, which if you look at the pipeline, we configured AWS CLI using this action here, this um, step here. Right, configure AWS credential. So what this does, it's inside that Ubuntu machine where we're running these jobs. It installs AWS CLI and then um, configures the credentials, passing in the AWS secret key and AWS um, access key ID. Right. So this now we're using inside the deploy. We're using calling AWS and we're seeing S3 and we're syncing. Right. So we're uploading the essentially what we're doing. We're uploading the build artifacts to S3. Right. So you can see here the S3 bucket. And you can see here we're passing in the S3 bucket. So if you look at this syntax here, what we're doing is the S3 bucket is going to be stored as a secret on GitHub, right? For the rep given repository. I'll get to show how that's done in a minute. But if you look here, we're using that pattern a lot where we have secrets dot something, right? So that's how you save secrets. You don't want to have your access key inside the um, YAML file because any developer or anybody that has access to your code would see your AWS um, um, confidentials, like secret keys and all that. So you want to actually store it an, as an EMV inside the repository, right? So, and for when you store it as an EMV inside the repository, the way you access it is by calling secrets dot whatever name you use to create that EMV. So you could see that we've used that a lot. So we have here secrets dot AWS key ID, we have here secrets dot, and also 
AWS default region and all that. So we get to add this inside the repository over here shortly. So with that said, you could see that the deploy command just um, syncs the current um, build artifacts. Um, this job just builds to AWS um, S3. And then the second command here, AWS Cloud Front creates invalidation. And then we're passing in the um, distribution ID, which is something we exported inside the AMV here. All right, you can see distribution ID. So what this does, it, it's just telling CloudFront to like, look, we've just uploaded something new to S3. Go back to S3 and pull it, All right? So go back to S3 and update your cache because, you know, of course, CloudFront is a content delivery network. Okay, so right now we're done with whatever code we need to add here, right? We've added everything. If everything looks correct, um, this should um, run. Um, if, we, if we've added the keys on AWS, on, sorry, on GitHub. So what we need to do next is push this code. Okay, so um, I'm just going to push that and open up my terminal. So I'm just going to do um, git status. And I'm going to add this and I'm going to commit uh, which branch this is on. Uh, it's uh, okay. It's branch. This is on my main branch. Of course, um, we want this to be on the same branch, which is still the main, because we want to see it run, right? So this is on the main branch. Um, okay. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to check out to a new branch. Since I'm on the main branch, usually I want to check out to a new branch. Um, FT, FT, add pipeline. Okay, uh, I need to specify the dash B flag. And um, and then I can now commit this with git add and then do git commit, specify a commit message, add CI CD to project. Okay, so I can then push this to GitHub. Right, so I can then, if you, if you're the cover time with Git, you know that you know you know Git command. So I'm just um, going to push this to the branch I just created. So first, let me check the branch I am on. Um, branch on the chore add pipeline branch. So I'm going to push this to GitHub. So to do that, I can use Git um, push origin chore add pipeline. Right. So I just push that to GitHub. And um, we can see here on GitHub that we have a new branch. So I'm going to send a pull request. But before I create a pull request, right, if we check inside action, you see that nothing happened. Right? We're not seeing, these are old actions, right? So uh, we're not seeing anything. Um, that's because uh, inside my action, action script, here, I specified that this should run inside the main branch. So until we merge this to the main branch, that's when you can, we can see this action run. But before we do that, do that we need to update, um, uh, add the keys we just, um, the keys uh, we need, this action needs, right? So to do that, to go inside, um, go inside settings, and inside settings will come all the way down to um, secrets and variables. And inside secrets and variables, click action, and this is where we get to add whatever secrets our GitHub action script needs. All right, so in here we can do new repository secrets and then we'll go back to the code here and look at the secrets we need to add. So the first secret we need to add is um, the secret um, for AWS, which is first of all, AWS access key ID. So AWS access key ID was what we copied during the time we created a new user. So on AWS inside um, the new user we created, which was GitHub Action. We created a user called GitHub Action. And we created a new access key for this user, right? So I'm just going to paste in that access key now. So I have it inside my computer, um, inside a notes, notepad. So I'm just going to paste this. Um, yeah, it's a secret. I'm going to paste this. But the second secret key, I'm going to paste it's without sharing my screen. So the AWS secret access key, um, 
I'm just going to add in add that. So I'll paste it. But the value, I'm just going to paste it without sharing my screen. So because if I do that, then everyone has access to my AWS account. So uh, I'm just going to copy that and paste it. And yeah, so I'm going to share my screen back. Okay, so I have my screen back. So you can see I've added the AWS secret access key and um, we need to still add more keys. So we need to add the um, AWS default region. So um, I can just click here and click on um, add repository secret and I'll paste in the key and the value will be for this demo we can use, um, let me just verify, we can use choose an AWS region. So on the top um, right here on AWS, you can just click on the drop down to select uh, a region. So I'm just going to use the US East one region for this US East one. And I can add the secrets. Then let's add the next secret, which is uh, the bucket S3 bucket. So this is just the name of the bucket we created earlier. So on here, I'm going to paste the key and then the value would be the name of the bucket. So we'll go back to the bucket and we'll just copy the name here. And we will paste that here and we add secret. Okay, so next we need to add um, distribution ID. So this is the CloudFront distribution ID. We'll just add secret and we'll paste in the key and then the value would be the distribution ID here, which is this, it's always this, right? So inside CloudFront distribution, we selected the distribution we created and we're selecting it, um, the ID, which is, you know, the random string here. So we'll just copy it and paste it down here and then we'll click add secret. So after doing that, um, I think we have our secrets all added on GitHub. Um, next, we need to go back to the pull request earlier and merge it to the main branch. So we'll go over here and we'll click um, compare. So before we merge it, let's go over to S3 and confirm that nothing is inside. So you can see inside S3, the bucket we created, nothing is inside, no object. So we want to merge this and we'll say, um, and we need to merge this into uh, my own branch. And yeah, so, um, yeah, so we're merging the add pipeline branch inside the main branch. So once we do that, um, create pull, pull request. And we go over, um, you can see the file changes. Um, file changes contains all our um, um, GitHub action um, file, workflow file, um, file, and inside the YAML command. Okay, so go back here, and then we'll click uh, merge pull requests. So we've just merged this. Now let's go back to actions. You can see that there is a new action running here. We'll just open it. You can see that now you see all our jobs, the, the things we declared in our um, pipeline YAML file. You can see that we have the first one, which is obviously doing the test, uh, running the test command. We have the next one, which is build front end. I'll have the next one, which is deploy. So until, because we have need inside our YAML file here, because we have need, um, if you scroll all the way up, we have this needs um, test front end. You have all the jobs showing as parallel. That is, this one has to complete before this one and then finally deploy. So we just, this might take some seconds to complete. Okay, so the build was successful, the test was successful. Next, now we're in the deploy phase. So we'll click through, we can actually see the steps, all the commands to specify um, in the command, um, the deploy phase happening. So it's setting up the job.
Um, okay, so the deploy phase was um, successful. So um, this artifact configure AWS credential, post to S3, um, post con configure AWS credentials, and then complete job. So if we go back down here and refresh, we now see our assets, which includes the HTML file and whatever images and all that, that our projects are bent on. So you could see the J uh, index.js file and all that. Now let's confirm that everything works properly. Let's go over to um, CloudFront and let's copy our CloudFront distribution um, URL and then let's paste this. Okay, so this is still, this might still be, um, okay, so let me just cross check this. Uh, we're supposed to see the pages on the cloud front. Um, origins, we have our bucket. And, um, Let's check in validation. And the validation was created. Um, let's see the buckets. Um, so I'm just going to refresh this and check the permissions to make sure that permissions were added properly. Okay, so we have the permissions. Okay, shop um, platforms B3L4R, um, B3L4R. Okay. Mm. Uh, this is supposed to show, I'm um, just going to check basically. Uh, let me just paste the URL again. Oh, I'm still getting access denied. Um, okay, time to troubleshoot. Mm. It's looking good. Behavior. Error accessibility. Okay. Uh, we don't need to add error pages just yet. Um, origin is okay. Everything looks okay. Okay, let me just check the origin make sure I did not miss anything. Um, okay, I'm just going to create a new type of access control. Maybe that's what is causing this. Um, allow S3 access. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to click this. And yeah, so I have a new access control. I'm going to copy the policy and then save changes. So then I'll have to like update the um, S3 bucket policy. Um, yep, so this is, um, yep adding the get object permission i can then i can then um, save this and um, we have the object we have the index.html let me try to check this again okay um now we have um we have the page showing up so this is the application we just deployed. Um, yep. So I think there is just some bit of um, some extra configuration needed um, for 
the error pages, I'm just going to try to redirect all, I'm going to create error pages to redirect all requests over to the index.html file. So that way, uh, I'm just going to put error response code 200. So this will just um, four, three, and customize error response. Response part to be index html because this is a single page application right we're deploying so the response will be 200 okay okay so i've just created that error response so now we can actually we don't need to put in the index of html file HTML again and now we have our application running so we've been able to do some debugging and that's it so looking at this now this is our pipeline all the way from GitHub side. So this is what the entire pipeline looks like. So first of all, had our test, uh, which um, tests the front end. We had our build, which does the building and had our deploy. So in this case, if anything fails, right? So let's just do something. Let's try to update the code a bit to like make something fail, right? So this time I'm just going to, because of time, I'm just going to push directly to the main branch. So um. Going to check out to the main branch right so and then i'm going to add something to the code right um people origin main just to update my local main with the remote and i'm going to add something to the code to like make it feel right make the pipeline feel so we'll get to see what happens so I'll go inside the source and I'm going to go inside the um, sample test and I'm going to say um, expect one plus, okay, one plus one to be three, which is going to be false, obviously, because one plus one is not, um, one plus one is two rather than three. All right, so this test would fail. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to add this. Testing failure. So we expect that it shouldn't deploy, right? If this test fails. Okay, I'm going to push this to um, our origin uh, main branch. So let's see what happens. Let's go over to um, the repository and let's go over to actions. And you see that I added a new push here. And let's see what happens. So the job is running. So the test um, is still running. So now we're having text the test code. So you see the test code failed. And if you go back to the summary here, you see that the rest of the um, pipeline is paused because obviously test has failed, right? So this is, a, a, in this, um, demo or sample we've been able to like see how CICD works so in reality maybe somebody does something to the code and the test field it shouldn't build the app it shouldn't deploy it right so that's CICD for you um, with GitHub Actions and um, I think that's it for me and that's it for the stream today uh, and um, I think um, due to the um, bad network connection we lost Melody but um, yeah, so that's it for today and um, thank you all for watching.